Okay, so this lesson involves basic math skills of rounding and becoming familiar with scientific notation, as well as the discussion of significant figures, otherwise known as significant digits. In terms of rounding, we're going to follow the very simple rule that if the neighbor is 5 to 9, we'll round up, and if the neighbor is 0 to 4, we'll keep the digit the same. There is a way, a, um, a way to round when the neighbor is exactly five, where you follow an even odd um, rule. I'll just leave that to you know add on at a later date in a higher level course. <clears throat> we'll follow the simple rule. Uh, if the neighbor's five to nine, we round up. And so having a look at these three examples, we round to the nearest hundredth, looking at 4.2163. We'll need to chop it after the one. So looking at the six, as our neighbor, because it falls in the 5 to 9 range, we will round the 1 up. And so we round to 4.22. That 1 becomes a 2. Looking at B, 5.254. So we're rounding, we're chopping it off after the 5, rounding there. The neighbor is a 4. We look at that neighbor, being that it falls in the 0 to 4, we will keep that 5 the same. And the last question, 10.998, if we round after the second 9, we look at the 8. That actually bumps the 9 to a 0, as in 10, which carries a 1 to the tenths position. And because that was a 9, it bumped up to a 10. And so I need to round the 0 to the 1s. We still have the 1 in the tens position, and so we finish with 11.00. Okay, moving on to scientific notation. I've done a couple of examples here. Scientific notation is a convenient form to express very large or very small numbers. So you will always see a, um, a decimal value between one and 10. Well, actually it doesn't necessarily have to have a decimal. This could have just been one, as opposed to 1.7 or two, but Anyways, it's definitely up front here is a number between 1 and 10. So in other words, the decimal's coming after a non-zero digit. Then we'll be multiplying by a power, always with base 10. And that exponent gives you an idea of how to convert this value in scientific notation into standard form. And it also gives you an idea, just by the sign of the exponent, the fact that it's negative indicates that the actual value of this measurement is less than 1. So the negative exponent tells us to move the decimal left in order to convert this value to standard form. So I'll show you what I mean here. One so we have 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5. So if we move the decimal 5 places to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then the new decimal is here, and these are zeros in these positions. And so we have 0 0.000017 meters. And as you can see, that's a very small number, definitely less than 1. The negative exponent was the clue to that. If you're going to take a number from standard form into scientific notation, then it requires that you place the decimal after the first non-zero digit, so after the 1 here, so we'll have 1.7, and then move the decimal again, right, to get it back to where it was there. And we see that it's time to send the negative 5. And so you can move either direction, back and forth, moving the decimal five places. What happens if the value has a positive exponent? Well, as you can see in this example here, we have a positive exponent of eight. That indicates that this value will be much greater than one. So the positive exponent telling us to move the decimal right to convert it to standard form. And so you could pause the video and convert this value to standard form. So you'll see that I moved the decimal eight places to the right, and then I just spaced every three digits. So we have 149,600,000 kilometers. And that happens to be the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And here we have the thickness of a human hair. Okay, so here's a couple of values. Express these in scientific notation. Check back with the video when you're finished. And so we have 4.2 times 10 to the 7, moving the decimal 7 places from here. 
seven places, and here 1.61, and counting it back five places. Okay, so be prepared to see values in scientific notation. I should make a comment too that your calculator has a button EXP or EE, and those are the buttons that you use to enter a value in scientific notation. So this one would be entered 4.2 EXP or EE and then 7. That's how you would enter that value. Over here, 1.61 EXP or EE and then the positive negative or may look like this on your calculator, but not subtraction and then 5. So that's how you'll enter values in scientific notation. Okay, moving on to significant figures. Significant figures uh, arise because in science we take lots of measurements. So in math we're often counting, and when you count, that's an exact count. We count 16 people in a line, there's not 15 and a half. Well, when we do measurements, measurements are always made using an instrument, some tool, and that tool has uncertainty. So measurements themselves are not exact. And when we generate a measurement based on the tool we're using, we call the digits that we use significant figures or significant digits. And they will be all the certain digits in a measurement plus one uncertain digit. So I'll show you what I mean here with ruler A and ruler B. First, I'd like you to notice that both ruler A here, as you see the centimeters, and ruler B are measuring in centimeters. And so these numbers here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, those are centimeters. Same here, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I've drawn a yellow line here, and I'd like you to use ruler A to measure the length of the yellow line. So hopefully you're feeling confident that it's at least 8 centimeters, but you really know that it's not up to 9 yet. You can now, so you're certain of the 8, and now you can estimate the next digit, perhaps 8.2. So we would say 8.2 centimeters. So this ruler has given us a measurement to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. Looking at ruler B, ruler B has other calibration there. It's been marked to the nearest millimeter, actually. And so we can see that the yellow line goes past the 7. And then, hopefully, perhaps you can see a little better than I can here, but it looks to me like it's it's going past the 2, and then perhaps only halfway to the next little marking. And so we have 7.25 centimeters. The idea is to notice here is that we were certain of this digit and estimated this one. We were certain of these two based on the markings on the ruler, and we estimated this one. Notice that ruler B gives us a reading to the nearest hundredth of a centimeter, two digits after the decimal. Ruler A gives us a reading to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, just one digit after the decimal. We would say that ruler B is more precise. So it's giving us measurements that are more precise, more digits after the decimal. You can bet that ruler B was more expensive to purchase than ruler A, just due to the cost of manufacturing. Okay, so with significant figures, we need to be able to count the number of significant figures in a measurement. And most textbooks or sources will give you five or six rules about how to do this. And I generally condense them into one rule with one exception. So here's the rule. Read the measurement from left to right. Begin counting at the first non-zero digit. So when I look at, and we've got a whole bunch of examples here. So as I look at this measurement here, I read from left to right. And the first digit I hit here, it is non-zero. So that means I start counting. So one, two, three three sig figs here. Okay, how about the next one? Start counting because this is a non-zero digit. One, two, three, four, five. So you read the value from left to right, and as soon as you hit a non-zero digit, you start counting. So I read the value from left to right. Hit a non-zero digit, so start counting, and count everything else after it. One, two, three, four. Four sig figs. Now reading the next one, I read the value from left to right, and don't start counting until I hit a non-zero digit. So right here, there's one sig fig. Okay, moving to the next one, don't start counting until I hit a non-zero digit. Right here, not zero, so one, two. 
two sig figs. Okay, I'm going to ask you to complete these. When you get down to the values in scientific notation, just focus in and follow the rule for the numbers between 1 and 10 out front. Okay, so pause the video, complete those questions, and then check back. Okay, and so you can see that I've placed the number of sig figs here, so you can check these as you go, and if you have any questions, be sure to bring them in for class. Now what I'd like you to do is make up a question that you think would be tough for you to answer. So see if you can come up with a measurement, an example, something like what I have here, but, you know, one that you would find confusing. So come in with a question that you think is a tough one. Either, either you can't think of one that would stump you or come up with one where you wouldn't be 100% confident how many sig figs are there and we'll tackle that together. Okay, there is one exception and maybe this was a question you came up with. What if there's no decimal and we have zeros at the end of the number? We call these trailing zeros. So trailing zeros here they come after the last non-zero digit. After the last non-zero digit. And they, there's no decimal. That's important though, that there's no decimal in the measurement. So here, right away when you notice no decimal, then look for zeros after the last non-zero digit. So these two are trailing zeros, so they don't count. So one sig fig. In the next one, the four counts, but these zeros are trailing. There's no decimal here, so two sig figs. Okay, 42,000 kilometers. These two are significant. These three are not. We have two sig figs. And in the temperature here, one sig fig. Now what if you had 601 degrees Celsius? And what if you had 6,010 degrees Celsius? So how many sig figs? Hopefully you're thinking three here. You read the number from left to right. Can start counting all the digits at the first non-zero digit. And it's only zeros at the end of the number when there's no decimal that are trailing. Here we just have one trailing zero. That's it. So there will be three sig figs for this measurement too. Okay, so try your best then, using the rounding skills, round to three sig figs for each of these questions here. Okay, and so you'll see that I had to first find where the three sig figs would be. I read the value from left to right, start counting at the first non-zero digit. One, two, three, look at the neighbor, it's low, keep the six the same. There we go. Over here, the three is the first non-zero digit. One, two, three, look at the nine, it's high, bump the zero to a one. Reading from left to right, the six is the first non-zero digit. One, two, three, look at the neighbor, it's low, keep the eight the same. Now, I can't just stop there at 618 because that's certainly nowhere near 6,182.4. And so essentially I need to put a trailing zero in there to hold the ones position so that the eight, one, and six end up in the tens, hundreds, and thousands, which is where they're supposed to be. Okay, so the only part of the lesson left then is just how do we handle addition and subtraction of measurements. So here's where we put it all together. Well, first of all, there's two rules. The addition and subtraction, you're going to round your final answer to the least number of digits after the decimal. So check out the measurements that we're adding. There are two digits after the decimal here and only one here. So when you do this addition, 4.12 plus 16.2, your calculator is going to give you 20.32 grams. Your calculator is not following any rules in terms of sig figs or addition or subtraction rules here. And so if you only have two digits after the decimal in the first measurement and one digit after the decimal in the second measurement, then you have to round this to one digit after the decimal here. So there was one digit here and two digits here. We've got to go to the one, the least number of digits after the decimal in the original measurements. And so that means I'm going to be rounding to the nearest tenth of a gram. I look at the two, the two tells me to keep, because it's low, tells me to keep the three uh, and not bump it to a four. So 20.3 grams. Okay, try the next one. 
Okay, your calculator is likely to give you 21 degrees here. It's likely to give you, when you do 28.5 minus 7.5, it'll be 21. But it's important to realize there was one digit after the decimal here and one digit after the decimal here. So in fact, we need to have one digit after the decimal in our answer. And so fill in the decimal zero if your calculator didn't have it there because you need to do that. Why? Well, the, t the thermometer that was used to measure these temperatures here measured to the nearest tenth of a degree Celsius. That's a certain precision. And so we need to make sure that our answer measures to the nearest tenth of a degree Celsius. So we are going to report our answer from addition and subtraction to the precision of the, of the least precise measurement. In this case, it was the nearest tenth of a gram. In this case, the nearest, in part B, the nearest tenth of a degree Celsius. Okay, for multiplication and division, now it's about counting sig figs. So now we look at the two measurements involved. How many sig figs here? Hopefully you're thinking three. How many sig figs here? Hopefully you're thinking four. So go ahead and do the calculation and round your final answer to the least number of sig figs, right? Which would be the three. So round your final answer to three sig figs. Okay, I copied out a bunch of the digits that the calculator gave me, and just noticing to round to three sig figs, I read the number from left to right, and I start counting at the first non-zero digit. So one, two, three. So that's where I am going to round the number. I look at the neighbor, it's an eight, that's high, so I will bump 0 0.378 to 0 0.379. Okay, try part B. Okay, so you'll see that the first we're multiplying, and so we're going to follow this rule to round to the least number of sig figs. So I count sig figs in the first measurement here. There are two, four in the second, and so I'm going to round to two sig figs in the end. When I compute on my calculator, the answer is 4.158. So now I count sig figs, reading from left to right. One, two. So I look at the neighbor. It's high. So I bump the one to a two. So we finish with 4.2. Now, I didn't put units into these questions, but if this had been, I don't know, centimeters times centimeters, if each measurement was centimeters, then we would have had centimeters squared. Follow your uh, laws of exponents there. If over here we had um, centimeters cubed divided by centimeters, then subtracting our exponents, we would finish here with centimeters squared. Okay, that's it.